Leonardo da Vinci's Mona Lisa and the Last Supper, Michelangelo's The Creation of Adam, Salvador Dali's The Persistence of Memory, That Time a Banana was duct taped to a canvas and another artist ate the banana, or this NFT of a monkey. Art has always come in various forms, with countless artists using the medium as a way to express something they have deep inside them, or as a way to get rich off the pockets of those with way too much money to know what to do with it. In anime, animators use art to enhance and tell a story in a visually pleasing way, or at least they attempt to. And in today's session, we will be taking a deeper look at some of the history of animation in Japan, as well as some of the styles of animation used today, including the revolutionary use of a very popular form of animation. With that out of the way, I'm Summers with Bakuda of Basics, and this is Art in Anime. Class is officially in session. Anime's roots can be found going all the way back to the early 1900s. It's hard to know exactly when the first piece of animation was created in Japan, this is because many of the film reels from that time have been lost, either from natural disasters, like the Great Kanto Earthquake in 1923, or the destruction caused by World War II. Some film reels may have naturally degraded over time, and in some cases the reels were used for commercials and were disassembled after use. The earliest piece of Japanese animation found to date is from 1907 called Katsudo Sashin. The film is only three seconds long and contains of just 50 frames, showing a boy dressed in a sailor suit. The incredibly short film was rediscovered in 2005, and while it may not be the first ever made in Japan, it is the oldest one found to date. Early animation in Japan was made with chalk rather than paper cutouts or today's cell animation. The lines need to be erased and redrawn between camera shots. Imagine having to draw and redraw every single second of animation for one of today's standard shows that come out weekly and tend to run over 20 minutes in length. One of the first real huge steps for animation though came from three men considered to be the fathers of anime. These industry leading figures in the history of anime filmmaking were Oten Shimokawa, Junichi Koichi, and Seitaro Kitayama. Oten was originally a cartoonist for a magazine called Tokyo Puck, who would go on to create five animated films for a studio called Tenkatsu before returning to his cartoonist work. Junichi was a painter who specialized in watercolors and was hired by a studio to be an animator and was widely considered one of the best of his time. And lastly, we have Seitaro, who created animations on his own and eventually founded his own studio. These three helped to shape the industry for years to come with the works they created in 1917. Now, even without the aforementioned earthquake in 1923 that devastated Tokyo, things were not easy for Japanese animators during this time. They were competing with foreign companies like Disney, who were selling already profitable products abroad and were able to undercut the Japanese market. This meant that for a studio to be profitable, it needed to work as efficiently as possible by having small teams that were terribly overworked. Most small studios could hardly compete with animation that was not only in color, but had sound and was produced with a much bigger budget. Their competition also had the advantage of being able to afford cell animation, whereas most Japanese studios were still using cutout animation to save money. The years leading up to World War II saw the Japanese government start enforcing national pride in any way they could. This included national pride through media and film by enacting laws to control and censor them. Specifically in 1939, the passing of the film law enforced heavy regulations on the industry ensured that they served the government's interests. While this did force creative direction, it also boosted the industry, causing large growth and many mergers of these smaller companies. 
Animation Japan had a lot of early struggles going on, but its counterpart, manga, was much cheaper to produce by comparison. And it was also a lot easier to censor and monitor by the government. However, once animation began to take off in Japan and more common frown practices of today became the norm, anime would truly begin its rise into the spotlight of Japanese and world culture. So in today's world of anime, we see a ton of popular art styles throughout the medium. A quick rundown of some of these more popular art styles include the cute and bright colors of kawaii style animation, as well as the childish and playful chibi art style with characters ages that would easily fool that one guy at every amusement park who has to guess how old you are. The moe art style is commonly confused with kawaii, but the easiest way to tell them apart is in moe, Characters look more childish, but they're still believable for their actual age, as well as looking somewhat realistic and not nearly as over the top as a kawaii art style would have them look. Speaking of a more realistic art style, this is the style that I personally find myself enjoying most frequently. Shows like Black Lagoon, Monster, and Cowboy Bebop all fit this art style, and like many realistic art stylized shows, come from the seinen demographic. This is because the darker themes these shows portray are made all the more impactful by having a more real-life feel to them. The weird or avant-garde style of animation relies heavily on weird, psychedelic imagery, with many different styles being mixed into one. Standard art style is as exactly as it sounds. It's the baseline for most animation and the most commonly used in anime. Finally, we have Echi. Big boobs, being half naked, and are usually having one animator go off the rails away from being just porn. There are tons of others, but these are usually the most popular styles seen in a lot of today's biggest shows. So we've talked about the history and some of the styles, but what has most anime fans gushing over a hot new show? Well, that is the use of a technique seen more and more recently in the anime world used only by the best key animators and well-polished of studio teams. This is called Sakuga. So this is where I want you to insert some dope music and fast-paced fight stuff. We'll figure that out. I'll get you some stuff, but we want this to look good. Sakuga is a well-known word in the anime fandom lexicon, especially for those who love action-packed shonen battle series. Initially, it was a catch-all term for animation that took on a more niche and specific definition over time. While the transliteration of Sakuga is working drawing or animation, this expression now denotes scenes in an anime that pay special attention to the drawing and animation quality that are especially memorable. Every Western anime fan can probably think of some of the more prominent examples of Sakuga that they've seen. Some examples of these would be the iconic battle between Rock Lee and Gara during the tuning exams in Naruto episode 48. To more recent examples like the fast-paced hand-to-hand action in episode 2 of the Chinese-Japanese Donghua Hitoru no Shita, the outcast. Or Levi's high-octane chase in season 3 episode 2 of Attack on Titan. Sakuga is not limited to action. Though, fighting is the most recognizable application for these highly fluid and well-rendered scenes. Some anime fans may be surprised to find that Sakuga's roots go as far back as the early 1980s and coincide with the introduction of terms such as otaku and charisma animator in Japan. Charisma animator described talented animators who were technically sound and proficient and had a distinct animation style. The big four among charisma animators in the late 1970s and early 1980s were Ichiro Itano, who is most well known for his work on Macros, Yasuomi Umetsu, who created Robot Carnival's iconic short, Presence, Yoshiaki Kawijiri, whose extensive portfolio includes Neo Tokyo's The Running Man and Vampire Hunter D. Bloodlust, and most notably at the time, Yoshinori Kanata, who contributed to such high-profile titles as Galaxy Express 999 and Kiki's Delivery Service. 
The modern use of the term sakuga strays quite a ways away from its humble origins as a descriptor for animation in general. Over the course of several decades, it has since changed to describe scenes in anime that are noteworthy, especially in the context of action sequences. It's safe to say that Sakuga has had an undeniable impact on both anime production and fan discourse. It has also brought new talent to the industry to show audiences worldwide some of the most unforgettable scenes and stories in media today. If there's anything we want you to take away from today's session, it would be that Japanese animation and art, like most things, had great struggles in its early days. But it persevered. It found a way to become one of the world's leading industries. That and Echi is 100% not porn and it's okay to like a little plot in your anime. Don't sue me. That's all I have for today's session. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. We'd love to have you. Also, leave a comment down below about some of your favorite art styles used in anime or any time you've seen Sakuga and it just blew your mind. I've been Summers with Baka to Basics, and I'll see you the next time that class is in session.